No, insisted the admin office. The only class you're allowed to drop is math, because that's your worst subject. Look, Xavier said, that policy doesn't make sense. If you're going to be bureaucratic about this, all I need to do is make biology my worst subject, put zero effort in, fail next semester's exams, then you'll have to let me drop bio, right? Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance. So let's sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. Double scoop of rainbow sherbet in a sugar cone please. I was working at an amusement theme park during my first year of college. There were three adjacent food shops near the park entrance and we would often switch between them as our schedule changes. One is a bakery, the second is an ice cream parlour and the third is a hot dog spot. I worked a ton of nights at the ice cream parlour, which is by far the stickiest, most hectic place compared to the other two. We worked the earliest and latest shifts out of all the areas because we're at the front of the park. I was at the end of a 16 hour day and my hairnet was fraying. My employer pays out overtime like Tic Tacs. People would stand in a long line and wait up to 45 minutes for our ice cream. It's not that our menu is to die for, it's because that's all people know in theme parks. Lines. You wait in lines. Occasionally, we have guests complaining to us about the line, but haven't taken that time to look at the menu and know what to order. Other times, we have guests who have special requests for their desserts. We fulfill their orders as best as we can, but if it's not a good idea, we'll try to suggest an alternative. We had a loud and sticky kid who was screaming in the line. Nobody was into it. Her family was over it. She made a beeline to my register without waiting for me to call them over. My guest left and I was still counting my change when the kid let out a demanding HELLO to call for my attention as her family made their way over to my spot. I asked her nicely to wait while I finished up. She said I should be done by the time she comes up. Her parents were out of earshot when I replied in a pleasant but stern tone that she should have waited until I called her over. She was a little shocked to hear anything said back to her, but on with the transaction. The parents ordered their waffle bowls, two siblings ordered their sundaes, then the kid in question. She asked for a double scoop of rainbow sherbet in a sugar cone. Now think of rainbow sherbet and whatever memory you have of it. Soft, mushy, and never in a stiff or hardened state. And as delicious as they are, sugar cones are teeny tiny compared to our traditional waffle cones. I asked if she was sure. She shouted, yes, in exasperation and complained to her parents. They were tired and told her to just finish ordering. I warned her that it might melt and asked her if she wanted me to turn the double scoop sugar cone upside down in a cup so she can eat it without worrying about it spilling off the sides. She grumbled and gave me a resounding no, said a couple of other unruly complaints to me. Her family didn't react. So I went ahead and gave that sweet, sweet girl the biggest double scoop of rainbow sherbet I can fit over the small sugar cone. I couldn't even bring it to her fast enough across the counter before it began melting and falling all over the sides. She ambitiously tried to lick it while walking away. It was time for my break, but I saw her cry over the fallen top scoop as I got my till out and left. A louder scream echoed through the shop and I turned and see that the second scoop has dropped out as well. I know, I know, this is a kid, but sometimes Kids are stupid, and all we give them is exactly what they ask for. Oh yeah, it was a kid, but it was an obnoxious kid, so hopefully that was a life lesson. Isn't that what the journal is for? I am working at a hotel in reservation with a girl who seems to hate me, like, a lot. Whenever I make mistakes, it's my first time working at a hotel, she would be, like, really hostile with me. One time, she even called me an idiot. 
And this also happens very often when I have the morning shift and she doesn't inform me about anything that has to be updated soon first thing in the morning. So there is a miscommunication with our customers, etc. And I take the blame. And when I confront her about it, she always confronts me back for not being prepared, meaning I have to ask her what I should work for as soon as I arrive at work. The next time I did ask her, she rolled her eyes at me and told me that's what the reservation journal is for, to write things down that need to be updated later in. And she doesn't really write much there either, apart from some unclear information which I would always ask her about later and that upsets her. It's like she's making it harder for me to do my job well. I've talked with human resources about it but she started acting even meaner to me, which made me consider quitting the job. So one day I decided I've had enough. I wrote down a very important information in the journal a night before my day off and did not drop her a message or anything about it at all. She was having the day off. And as one can guess, she missed it and tried to blame it on me. So I told her it's all in the journal. She should have checked it first thing in the morning. I only wanted to stand up to her bullying me by letting her taste her own medicine. Imagine if they stopped communicating with her like completely and the only way they communicated was through the journal. Then she was like, what do I need to do? You just point to the journal. The school said his grades weren't bad enough. Back when dinosaurs ruled the earth and I was in school, people doing the British GCE A levels would commonly take more classes than you actually needed to graduate. You were of course allowed to drop subjects after a certain point. Well, in theory. I had a classmate. His name starts with X, so let's call him Xavier. Xavier decided that he didn't like biology, so he asked the admin office if he could drop the subject, but the school administrators refused. You can't drop biology, said the admin office. You're doing fine in that class. Mathematics is your worst subject. If you want to drop a subject, it should be math. But I need to keep math, Xavier replied. It might matter for my university applications. If I want to do computer science or accounting or something. Biology isn't going to help me. I'm not going to be a doctor or anything like that. If I drop bio, I can spend more time on calculus and stats. Get my grades up. My parents agree with me. They think it's a good idea. No, insisted the admin office. The only class you're allowed to drop is math, because that's your worst subject. Look, Xavier said, that policy doesn't make sense. If you're going to be bureaucratic about this, all I need to do is make biology my worst subject, put zero effort in, fail next semester's exams. Then you'll have to let me drop bio, right? Obviously, the school didn't like this. The school warned him that they'd be tracking his class attendance. They warned him that he had to turn in his assignments, do his lab practicals, show up for his exam papers, or he'd face disciplinary action. So he did. He just didn't do any actual work. Now the people giving him a hard time were the school admin staff, not the actual teachers. The bio teachers were slightly sympathetic. They thought the policy was kinda stupid too, but they had to enforce it. So Xavier asked them if he could physically turn up to his tutorials and lectures, but not actually take notes. Maybe he could do something else to stay awake, like clean his sports gear. The teachers said this was fine. They didn't count on him coming into the lecture theatre, sitting down and unleashing a sword with a cheerful red tassel on the pommel. Then he took out his rags and metal polish. We had designated seating and Xavier was near the front. Since the lecture theatre had elevated rows of seats, it meant a few hundred students could see the room's fluorescent lights gleam brightly off his sword by the time he was done. I'm a wushu practitioner, Xavier explained, pointing to the other weapons sticking out of his duffel bag. If the fencing and kendo kids get to carry their gear, then so do I. 
Xavier also turned in all his assignments and dutifully sat for tests. The entire biology department discovered what he'd been doing at the next post-exam review. When the teachers showed us some examples of good and bad answers, they didn't reveal which student had submitted the papers of course. But it was pretty obvious who was responsible. When we were dealing with lines like, anaerobic respiration produces alcohol, which makes it very popular on Saturday nights. Or, eventually the molecules get bored and leave. They had to give him some actual marks, since at least part of that stuff was technically correct. The school let him drop biology. This wasn't Xavier's only brush with the school's authorities. He was that kind of student. So, of course, given his long-standing respect for education and institutes of learning, he ended up as a high school relief teacher a few years later. Today, he teaches courses at a couple of polytechnics and a local university, and is finishing grad school on the side. Someday soon, I figured they'll be calling him Professor X. I used to love trying to think of questions like that, you know, witty things that you can write to make someone laugh, but that, that was really good, like, oh, the molecules just get bored and leave. <laughs> like, if you don't know the answer, you may as well put some up funny. Please change your Facebook review to a positive one. Okay. A few years ago, I bought a new shed slash sunroof. A few years ago, I bought a new shed slash sunroof combination for my garden. It was pretty expensive, and thus I also paid for the company to build it. Knowing me, I would mess it up, so I was happy to pay a professional to come fix that for me. The shed has a roof with a bitumen topping. It looks like very thick sandpaper. The professional builder tacked it in place and that was that. I asked him if no glue would be needed to keep it in place, but obviously I know nothing and that was a dumb question. Lo and behold, six weeks later, a mild storm blew off the entire bitumen topping off of the roof. I called the company only to be told I should have known this would be a temporary roof and these need to be changed like every year. Can you smell the BS? I replied it has only been six weeks, you need to come fix this. Nope, a storm was the reason for damage. Act of God, no help from them. Well. Okay, they promised to send a new roll of bitumen so I could replace it myself. I waited, no bitumen. I went to their Facebook page to find lots of people complaining about similar stuff. I wrote a review warning people to not buy their expensive sheds as they get built wrong and any damage resulting from this does not get resolved by them whatsoever. Mind you, this shed was over 1,000 euros. A half an hour later, I get a phone call from said company. They tell me they will come the next day to put on expensive shingles to make up for the damage, at their own cost. But I do have to change my review. I waited for them to come fix it and they held to their promise. So did I. I wrote on their page how they came and fixed my roof, even exchanged the material for a much more expensive solution. The very next day, at their own cost. Needless to say, this caused a mess of customers demanding the same solution. You're welcome, douchebags. You see, that's why you just do it right in the first place, and then you don't have to go through all of this kind of negative stuff, but they deserve the loss in having to put things right for the other customers. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.